He is very responsible and wants to be financially stable. Number one, we don't know why the 911 call was placed. Number two, he left his phone. We're not going to be upset with you. We're going to hug your neck and be glad to see you. That was Penny Stone, an aunt that is very concerned about her missing nephew. And once you get into the details of this case, I don't know which way to go. Let's dig into it together. It is time to turn on the searchlight for Joshua Graham Kasky. Welcome back to Brain Scratch Searchlight. I'm John Lorden. Thank you so much for joining me here today and for caring about these cases like I do. There is a storm going on outside, so if you hear some thunder and possibly rain, that's uh, what's happening in the background there. But we also have a storm going on with this family, and we have to see if we can try to help them. Uh, today's episode is going to be a little bit different. There's not a lot of news coverage on this case, so we're going to start the episode by going through the few available articles. I have some media I've been able to pull from the Facebook group for this case as well. And I'll kind of intertwine that. I've already spoken to one of Joshua's friends, uh, a good friend of his for five years. I'm going to try to weave in some of that information. And then we're going to bring on not only his aunt, but Joshua's sister, Jordan, will also be joining. So a little bit different. But let's go ahead and get started with the articles that we do have here, uh, starting with where this is taking place over at Wikipedia, Winterset, Iowa. Winterset is a city in Madison County, Iowa, population... 5,353 as of the 2020 census. It's part of the Des Moines metropolitan area, and it is the birthplace of actor John Wayne. Uh, the name was originally supposed to be Somerset, but due to the unreasonable or unseasonable coldness, uh, maybe a little bit of both, uh, it made the commissioners reverse that and they changed the name to Winterset. Now, when I went looking for information about Joshua in particular, of course, I started at NamUs. And there are currently, there's no entry for him that's at least active here. Uh, I did speak to Penny about that already. I had told her this is a place where we need a record for a case like this. He's been missing uh, approximately four months at this point. Um, and of course, we know how important NamUs is because it crosses those boundaries of police jurisdictions uh, if, for, if the, the tragic outcome has happened. Uh, and he's been unidentified, NamUs is a great system for getting his name attached to his remains. Uh, I'm not saying that that's what's happening here. I certainly hope that's not what's happening, but of course we need to cover all bases. So um, I did speak to her. She's going to talk to her law enforcement contact to see if that's in the works. If it's not, I will help her uh, go ahead and get that record done uh, together so we can make sure that we're kind of firing on all cylinders. And this case seemingly kind of needs it. Even here at missingpersons.iowa.gov, kind of the official website uh, for Iowa, we have the basics of the case, but we don't even have a poster associated with it. We've got no pictures. Uh, age now, 26 years old. He is five foot 10, weighs around 165 pounds. He's a white male with brown hair and brown eyes. Uh, and we've got several pictures I'll be showing down below because uh, his hair, he looks very different if he changes his hair. I've seen pictures of him almost with uh, a shaved head. Um, if his hair grows in, it kind of gets thick, and then he gets a big, thick beard as well. So we've got kind of the different looks uh, that you might see with him out there today, uh, scrolling right below me on the screen here. Uh, it does note here that for the incident code, they are saying endangered. Um, they think that there might be some type of threat to him. I'm curious to hear more from the family uh, about what's going on with that. Uh, he went missing on January 18th of 2024. And of course, we'll crack into all the circumstances on that. Uh, we do have a missing person poster for him. Just unfortunately, it's not associated with that record. But here we see uh, several of the pictures. It's also mentioning that there is a reward if found. And it's also showing a vehicle. A vehicle is part of this story as well, which is kind of a strange twist in this. You know, we have several cases where there's a missing person and it's attached to a vehicle. In many of those cases, the vehicle is found, even if the person remains missing. Like, you know, we've got Brandon Lawson, Jason Landry, Maura Murray. Like, we, we know those types of cases. This one's kind of unique in that the vehicle is also still missing. 
law enforcement's been trying to track the vehicle. Unfortunately, from what I understand, there's no onboard GPS in this model of Ford Taurus. Uh, this was from 2013, and I guess they didn't start that until the 2015 model based on what Penny told me. Um, but there are plate scanners, and that has actually worked to some degree. They've actually had a few pings in terms of his car, his car location based on plate scanning, but that has stopped at this point. And, you know, it's been several months now. So obviously we got some big concerns here, but also just a big question in terms of, you know, we have a lot of cases where people go missing, people disappear. Sometimes they're not found for years, sometimes decades. Vehicles, it's a whole different thing. There's a lot of identifying marks on these vehicles. It's it's done intentionally so that they're not quite as easy to, to steal. Um, so there's a lot of information that would tie back this vehicle to him. It's very curious that uh, we still don't know where that vehicle is. Uh, also, just a quick note, he does have some tattoos. Uh, we can see them here on his left leg, um, almost uh, placed like you might consider decals or, or stickers. Uh, and we can see a close up of some of them here as well. I don't know if he has any more. That's part of the benefit of having the name as profiles. That information kind of gets tightened up a little bit. But clearly, from these two photos, we can see that at least on his left leg, a number of small uh, tattoos. Stopping over at his Facebook page, I was just trying to learn a little bit more about him. Uh, I think his banner photo kind of tells you something about him. This seems to be someone that enjoys good times with his family. Uh, that's really something that I think this, this banner photo is calling out. Outside of that, not a ton of information, except that we do see that he did start a relationship with uh, Desiree Fagan, and that seemed to start in September or 20 at least the Facebook status of it started in September of 2023. So kind of a fairly new relationship. Uh, his friend Tiernan that I spoke to also confirmed that it was a relatively uh, young relationship. Something else his friend Tiernan told me was of all of his friends, Josh would be the last one that he would be worried about. This is a guy that was generally very positive, uh, a bit soft-spoken, someone that liked to play chess and video games with his buddies, um, just not the type of person you would generally be worrying about in this way. So, uh, of course, he's already troubled by what's happening around this case. And there's some element that we're going to learn about once we speak to his family about him maybe not being happy with his job situation. But something that his friend Tiernan pointed out to me was uh, Josh is former uh, military. And he had spoken to the VA about the possibility of getting a loan uh, to become a pilot. And according to what Tiernan heard from Josh, they were willing to do that. So he kind of had a path for what was going to happen next in his career. And it looks like he was being supported um, from the, the VA with that. So it's just another big question in terms of, yeah, maybe he was in a job that he wasn't so happy about, but you know, is, is that cause to, to go up and missing like this? Of course, I did mention that there was a new relationship at play. Uh, his girlfriend, Desiree, put a post out on May 7th saying, I think about Josh every day and every hour. I wish I could have seen how much he truly was struggling. He's such a sweet person and was nothing but wonderful to me. I know we were together only for a short period before he left, but that short period was one of the happiest periods of my life. He made me feel so cared for and loved. I hope wherever he is, he is safe, and I hope he knows he is loved by so many. I look for his car on my street every day, and every time I hear my apartment building doors open, part of me hopes it will be him. I miss you every day. Um, also, within the past few weeks, uh, Marissa over at The Vanished has done her usual excellent work of pulling an episode together. Uh, Penny also interviewed for that episode as well. Um, we're going to try to essentially make this a companion piece to The Vanished podcast. As always, you, you guys know I love Marissa's work. Um, please, as soon as you're done watching this video, jump over and listen to that. It's going to have some information that I don't cover here. Of course, all the basics of uh, the case that we need to get out there to make this 
a, a proper missing persons profile is going to be here. And I think you're going to find that just in terms of the legs of conversation, Marissa goes one direction, I'm going to kind of go another. But I really also wanted to help get a video component out here because there's an aspect of this case that is very visual. And essentially what that is, is when Josh decides that he's going to leave, he takes off. And within a matter of a few days, he has traveled through several states. So I think it's really important that we kind of pull in that map view, see if we can make any sense out of that. Is that telling us something potentially about where he's trying to head to? Plus there's a couple of pieces of visual information that we found along the way. You're gonna get all that here. And like I said, I just wanted to make this kind of a good solid companion piece to Marissa's fine work at The Vanished. Joshua Graham Caskey was preparing to move from Winterset, Iowa into his girlfriend's apartment in Des Moines. Joshua spent the evening of January 17th with his girlfriend. He then returned home the following morning. Everything seemed fine. Joshua even texted his girlfriend that he loved her. And then something else happened. Let's get to one of the few news articles on this case over the Des Moines Register. The Winterset Police Department is asking the public for help. Joshua Aaron Graham Caskey, 25 years old, was last seen around 9 a.m. on Thursday. That would be January 18th. Winterset police conducted a welfare check and couldn't locate Caskey nor his green 2013 Ford Taurus with the Iowa license plate KNZ 677. Uh, and it's a very particular type of green. I believe that this color is actually called ginger ale. I actually tried to look it up specifically um, from the Ford manufacturing website. Um, so a bit of a unique, it's got this kind of metallic in a way, you would almost say it has like kind of a champagne look, except there's a very strong green tint that's pulling through that. So ginger ale is is the official name for that color. Uh, let's go ahead and get some more details over at My Pulse News. Initial involvement with this case began on January 18th when an incomplete 911 call was received from Mr. Graham Kasky's phone number. Now, I've heard this reported a few different ways. I'm looking forward to asking about this when we get the family here with us. I don't know if we're talking like a pocket dial. I believe that there was some conversation based on what Marissa said on Vanished because there was some conclusion about that the person that was calling didn't seem uh, particularly anxious or upset. Uh, something along those lines. So I'm looking forward to asking the family. I don't know if they've heard the 911 call, but it's curious to me. There must have been something about that 911 call that triggered this follow-up of we need to do a welfare check. And then also keep in mind that categorization that we saw over on the Iowa missingpersons.iowa.gov page of the incident code being endangered. There's something about that phone call that I just, unfortunately, I don't have the details at this time, but maybe we'll, we will get them uh, from the family. So anyway, uh, they did do the welfare check. Um, he wasn't there. His neighbors reported seeing his vehicle leave the residence prior to the officer's arrival. Um, and I believe that there was some ring doorbell footage basically of his car as it was taking off. A stop and check welfare order was issued on January 18th due to the nature of the 911 call. So once again, it's pointing to there seemingly was a conversation of some kind, and I'm just not sure what came across in that, but there must have been some hint of him being at risk for something. Uh, and look, I mean, we look into enough of these cases and we talk about this possibility all the time. Is there some potential aspect of self-harm involved in this case? It's possible. I can tell you there's a lot of indicators that are not looking like that to me. Um, and regardless, we need to find where he is. And essentially, I think our our best shot at that is really locating that car. Um, that's why I'm going to focus so strongly on this car. Um, so, but like I said, there's other things that are going on with this story that are really making me question that possibility. And of course, we're four months in. Uh, we really need to stay open to all possibilities at this point. After several conversations with family and friends, Mr. Graham Caskey was officially entered into Iowa NCIC as a missing person on January 19th, 2024, due to concerns for his personal safety. So it it does sound like there's something about that phone call where they were they were concerned about him. I don't know that that means they were concerned that he might harm himself. Maybe there was something else at play. Um, 
but something in that phone call came across very strongly to them. Thankful to hear that they did get him entered into NCIC, and that would kind of prove beneficial because, once again, the car uh, would be entered as part of that record. His license plate would be entered, and that would kick into that whole system of plate scanners, and that would give us some, some tracing of where he was traveling to. And that's where we get to this type of update from WHO13.com. Missing Winterset man's car spotted out of state. Neighbors told officers they saw his vehicle leaving the home right before they arrived on the scene. The following day, he was entered into NCIC. Since the welfare check, evidence has been discovered that shows Graham Kasky's vehicle in Missouri and Oklahoma on January 18th. So we have a lot of travel that is part of this. Um, all these different stops that you're seeing here, this map that we've put together, these are all basically confirmed known places where he was. Um, I'm going to bring up my notes here so we can kind of go through this together really quickly and uh, try to figure this out. So we're starting from the furthest north winter set. Uh, we know his girlfriend's living in Des Moines. So actually, if you roll it back to, you know, the night before his disappearance, he's in that area. But he's at his home in Winterset and decides he's going to leave. Uh, the next stop, he actually stops at a convenience store in Winterset. Um, and we know there's a withdrawal that happens there. He takes about $400. So that's another one of those things that's kind of interesting to me. You know, in, in the self-harm situations we've looked into, I, I, I can't recall one off the top of my head where someone goes and kind of grabs up a, a large sum of money like that. And here, I mean, look at all this travel we have. And I can tell you guys, all this travel basically happens within two days before we kind of lose track of him. Um, this is a lot, 718 miles, over 12 hours just of drive time. And this is, it's a little bit more than a 24 hour period that I think we're looking at here. But uh, so the 911 call from his house actually happens at 9.44 a.m. on January 18th. Then around 10.30 is when uh, he's at that convenience store and he does an ATM withdrawal. He then is next seen in Harrison, Missouri. Uh, we travel to the second point here, Harrison, uh, Har Harrisonville, sorry. And that is a stop at a McDonald's. And... Uh, some of this information is coming from plate scans. Some of it is coming from debit card usage. So that's where we're kind of getting this together, um, which is another interesting thing. Like he pulls a bunch of cash, but then as he's traveling, he's still using his debit card as well. Um, after that, Benton County is this stop here, and that is a plate scan. So uh, confirmed. Like I said, all of these are, are confirmed. Um, after that, Locust Grove. Now, what's curious about this location, Locust Grove is where Aunt Penny lives. And uh, Aunt Penny is, I think you could say she's very close to Josh. As a matter of fact, I know Josh and possibly uh, his siblings might have actually, uh, I believe he has more than one sibling. I'm going to find out more in the interview with you guys. But um, I believe that he lived with his aunt for a period of time. So it's kind of interesting he would drive through there. As a matter of fact, this article at kcci.com highlights that. Uh, here's a quote from Aunt Penny. To be pinged in Locust Grove and not come to my house really concerns me. Josh always comes here when he's in Oklahoma. For some reason... Uh, he decided not to. Uh, Twin Oaks, Oklahoma, there's a gas purchase. I believe that is a debit card that is used there. Uh, from there, Fort Smith, Arkansas, um, which is another gas purchase. You know, he's traveling hundreds of miles during all this. Um, and there we actually have pictures. So let's take a look at these real quick. Uh, and this is another interesting thing to note. Here we actually have the clothing that he was wearing on this day that he went missing. So we can see he's got kind of a yellow uh, hoodie that's on. Looks like he might be wearing jeans and just kind of uh, tennis shoes as well. From there, he traveled, and I'm, I'm hearing it pronounced both ways. It's either Mena or Mena, Arkansas. 
Uh, there's an X on there and he stops there. He goes in and he buys water and I think he gets two packs of corn nuts as well. At this location, they actually get footage of him. So we've got video we can watch. Let's take a look at this together. Hello. You got that shit for me. It's our fault. Yeah. I got it. Okay. I, so I yeah. They kept pushing it back because of the weather and the color silver for it. And it's going to be 483. Okay. Oh, okay. Now Friday at 9, how long does your package usually last? Okay, so I don't have to change that. So I don't think so, but I'm working on it. Okay. Okay, that's what I was. Look like a regular interaction. We can see he did use his debit card again in that interaction. Not a whole lot else that we can grab from that, except we did get um, some very good looks at in terms of what he was wearing. Um, just again, confirming that we're talking, you know, yellow sweatshirt. In that instance, he does have kind of a beige cap that he's also wearing. Uh, his pants look like they might actually be gray. I'm not sure if that is... Yeah, they might actually be gray. But... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you know, for someone thinking along the lines, like if this is someone that's trying to disappear or something, like he's using his ATM card a lot and... I would figure he knows that that would be easy to trace. Uh, interesting to me that he also pulled that amount of cash and he doesn't seem to be using that cash. Um, I'm not, I just, I don't have the feeling that this is someone that is trying his best to kind of cover up where he's headed to. And to be honest, it kind of has me concerned that maybe there's some type of accident that happened. Maybe he was traveling to some particular place and something happened along the way. I don't know. Um, it's it's troubling. I mean, by these accounts, it, it seems kind of normal. The map that we're looking at has a very strong direction. He's traveling at a pretty good rate. Uh, you know, the I don't think I mentioned it, but basically up to the Oklahoma gas purchase. Um, so right after Locust Grove, this this is all like in the evening on Thursday when he went missing. And then the next morning is where he pops up um, at Fort Smith down here. And then from there, we have him, that footage that we saw, I think I think it might even be timestamped, but it's around, uh, it's afternoon, yeah, 1224 p.m. on Friday. And that's kind of where the solid stuff that we can rely on stops. Uh, we do get an update here from the Winterset Police Department for immediate release on January 30th. The Winterset Police Department continues to search for Joshua Graham Kasky in regard to a missing person investigation. We've been able to confirm through law enforcement plate readers, financial transactions, and business surveillance cameras that Mr. Graham Kasky has been traveling south through Missouri, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. The last known confirmed location of Mr. Graham Kasky, Kasky was Mena or Mena, Arkansas, on January 19th, 2024. Efforts to locate Mr. Graham Kasky through phone records, phone GPS pings, Sirius satellite radio, Ford Motor Company GPS, purchase history beyond the 19th of 2024, and law enforcement license plate readers have been unsuccessful thus far. The most recent photos of Mr. Graham Kasky and his vehicle, a 2000, well, here they're saying 2004 Ford Taurus. I thought it was a 2013 based on the other stuff we saw, um, are included below. Anyone with information as to Mr. Graham Kasky's whereabouts is asked to contact the Winterset Police Department. This investigation is not a criminal investigation and is an effort to locate and ensure the safety of Mr. Graham Kasky. And that's something that seems to be a strong message coming from both law enforcement and his family, they're trying to say, you know, Josh, if you see this, you're not in trouble. Um, maybe we'll learn a little bit more about his personality from them and, and get a better understanding of why that seems to be such a strong concern here. But I think without further ado, it's time to do that. So let's go ahead and 
bring on his family. And right now I have the special privilege of bringing on to the show Jordan Caskey. This is Joshua's sister and their aunt, Penny Stone. Now, when I was looking through some of the Facebook profiles, I thought that I might have seen, is there another sibling or is it just the two of you? We have an older brother, yes. Okay, that's Jacob, right? Yep. Okay, okay. So three siblings kind of make up this family in total. And something else that's kind of interesting that I learned about and you know, in a lot of missing persons cases, we saw, uh, we usually see the mother kind of be a big voice in this. Um, Aunt Penny, in this case, you had Josh and Jordan. Was Jacob part of that equation too, living with you guys? Jacob, no, Jacob okay. was not. It was just Josh and Jordan. Okay. Okay. How long? And I had them for several years. Okay. Several years when they were growing up. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, you know, for some of us, an aunt might be someone we see once a year or something like that. Not the case with Aunt Penny here. She's very oh, no, close. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I, like, I've told, like I've said, they're like my kids. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to roll back a little bit. I, I still don't know a whole lot about Joshua, so I just wanted to spend some time and learn more about him. Jordan, uh, what type of brother was Joshua when you were growing up? Josh was... <laughs> Your most average, overprotective, would not let me out of his sight. Uh, but look, I don't even think I had a chance at going to a dance because he was so overprotective. Um, and he was just always there, you know. I mean, we were we're Irish twins, as they say, you know. We're at the same age for a couple months out of the year, and we, I mean, we were together constantly, you know. Uh, he was like my twin. He really was. Yeah. And. Um, he was just so supportive of everything. So it shocks me that we're kind of in this situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Aunt Penny, what about you? What What do you remember about Josh growing up? What's a memory that sticks out for you? You know, Josh is the most loving, caring, affectionate, probably kid growing up that I've ever been around. He is, um, you know... When I think about Josh, I think about, I think about love. I think about, um, you know, he, I could ask him to do something. He didn't question it. He'd do it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, growing up in school, he was a goofy kid. In fact, I came across a picture the other day and I think I, I sent it to, I don't know if I put it on Facebook or what, where he had his, his school colors were green <laughs> and he, you know, they were living with me and his hair, you know, he, Josh doesn't like his hair getting long. It gets bushy. And his hair, he put, he said, can I dye my hair green? I said, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So he's got this goofy picture of him with the green hair. I mean, he was just an all around fun, good kid. He's a good kid. And, and, you know, and I was telling somebody the other day, I never ever in my lifetime would have ever thought that I'd be dealing with a missing person and especially not Josh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was so family oriented. It's, very much. It's crazy that we haven't heard from him. Yeah. Yeah. It's very much, yeah. very much so. What types of things uh, are is he into? I know Tiernan told me that you know he likes to go fishing. Uh, they would they would play video games together. They would play chess together. Are there other interests that that stick out for you? To me, and when he came down here in the summertime, mm -hmm. when he came from Iowa in the summertime, and even when he was here, of course, growing up, he loves going to the creek and going swimming. Mm -hmm. um, loves being around the water, you know. Uh, camping. Yeah. He'll camp, you know, and somebody asked me, you know, was he an avid hiker? No, he's not an avid hiker at all. Um, but do I see him hiking? Probably. Yeah. I mean, he's one of those that would try anything, you know, but as far as, um, doing stuff, I, he was all around he was game to try anything, go do anything, especially in the summer being at the water at the Creek. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, in fact, I, I will say this, when they, when they told me that he had came through Locust Grove that Thursday um, night, before I knew that he had went on towards Arkansas, I got in my car and uh, with a friend of mine and I drove to every site. I did too. <laughs> that I thought, uh, you know, water site that I thought he might just have went to. Yeah. And of course, looking for his car and didn't find it, of course. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So... As a young man, he comes out of school. Does he go right into the military? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what branch did he serve in? Army. 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 Um, can you tell yep. us about his specialty there? 
So he was a water purification specialist. Um, I don't know exactly what that entails, um, but I do know that that, he never changed his specialty throughout. I mean, all his years of service, that's what his MO was essentially. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and Tiernan kind of made a, a statement that is sticking out in my mind about, um, it, it's weird because I'm getting the sense he's outdoorsy, but you're not, you're saying like he wouldn't go live in the woods or something like that. Not that I know of. Okay. I don't see it. I don't and see I, and it. And let me say the reason I say that. Yeah. Okay. Josh is one of these that is very particular about the way he looks. Yes. Okay. Okay. He will print in the mirror and in the bathroom longer than a woman will. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Okay. So I don't see him um, living out, you know, wanting to live out, out in the woods for any length of time. Even when he comes here, you know, and comes from her house or my house, you know, he will um, go spend the night at his buddy's house. And then he's here the next day showering and, and primping. And, and so, no, I, I, I just don't see that. Okay. But it, it is curious just that, um, and this is kind of the point that Tiernan was making that like, you know, he's a water purification specialist. Like if he wanted to go live off grid somewhere, all he would need is a Creek and he'd be good. Like he'd be exactly. solid. Yeah, um, this is true. Yeah. So if we are talking about some potential of some type of mental break or something like that, where he feels like he has to run and he has to hide, um, there is, I guess we have to stay open to that possibility in some way. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And obviously we're not dealing with kind of <laughs> the normal phases of Josh that you guys have gotten to know and love over the years, right? Yeah. Like he, uh, right. Is very out of character for him. So much, so much. Yeah. Even if he was struggling at any point, he would still be in contact with our family. Mm -hmm. um, it's very odd to have gone this long without at least getting a text from him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and like I said before, um, even if he, you know, he doesn't have his phone and even if he doesn't have our phone numbers, um, for for it to be going on this long, I, I cannot see if he's in his right mind that he wouldn't at least get on Facebook Messenger and message her mm -hmm. or me and say, I'm OK. Yeah. 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 You know, just letting us know that. And for that reason, it, that, you know, that that part concerns me because in his right mind, he would, mm -hmm. he would let us know that he's okay. And had he done that, um, you know, we would have let him do his thing. Absolutely. You know? uh, yeah. It's just the fact that we haven't heard from him and the 911 call. That's what has us so concerned. And the I, fact we haven't found his car. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I do get the sense though, based on some comments that I've heard from you Aunt Penny in other places that is he a nervous type of person or like worried about being in trouble? Oh yeah. Yes. He's a, he's a worry wart. Like, you know, he thinks if he doesn't, you know, he's got to do everything right. Okay. And, um, you know, paying bills and, and his finances, everything's got to be right. You know, he was concerned. You know, he did talk to me about that that Tuesday night because he was going to move in with Desiree. And he was concerned about that lease. And I and I let him know straight up, you know, look, you can't get out of that lease. You know, Okay, so he had, he had a lease. We're jumping ahead a little bit, but... He had a lease at the place he was moving out of. He was going to be breaking right. the lease. And Correct. effectively, he was worried about that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And so, and, and what I'm leading, what, what, where I'm going with that is he was concerned about doing anything wrong, per se. Yeah. You know, yeah. he thought if he didn't pay a bill, he would go to jail. He would end up going to jail. And, you know, <laughs> I'm like, Josh, that's not going to happen, you know. But I did, you know, I did talk to him that night and I did tell him, you know, you won't be able to get out of that lease. You will have to pay that lease. How and, did he wind um, up in Winterset? Well, the job, a job offer, actually, um, once he got um, unenlisted from the army, I guess, he, you know, served his four years. Um, he came home from Germany and went straight to Winterset, mm -hmm. actually. He and worked even... on the turbines. Mm -hmm. OK, so I think they may have set him up with that kind of job. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, because it's not super close to the rest of the family, right? Mm -hmm. so, no, yeah. okay. no, we were really surprised. Yeah. You know, when he said, hey, I'm moving to Iowa, I'm going to go work on the windmills. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Random, but all right. Okay. <laughs> you know, he knew what he was doing. He, he And he made good money, you know. Um, he did real good there while he was working. Mm -hmm. Was he living alone there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So no he roommates. Had a couple friends that would come and stay for extended periods of time. But most of the time, it was just him doing okay. his thing. Okay. 
Um, so what was he doing for work right around the time of the disappearance? What was, and what was the issue with it? What was going on around Manufacturing, work? manufacturing. Okay. And um, he did not like that place. Um, mm -mm. He told me that night on Tuesday, he said, you know, peeps, he said, I've always worked. I've always been a worker and which he has. And he said, but I just do not like this job I'm at. I'm going to have to get out of this job. He said, I've got some two interviews coming up that Friday. And um, he said, and you know, I've never called into a job. I have never called in. And he said, I called in this evening uh, today. I didn't go to work. And I told him, I said, you know what? That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. You know, it's okay that you called in. Don't worry about it. And I said, and go to your interviews Friday and hopefully something good comes out of that. You know, he said I have put, he said he had put inter, uh, applications in lots of different places and that he was going to get out of that job. He did, he was not happy with that job. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to name, I don't want to name the place, but I did take a look at it online mm -hmm. and he wouldn't be the only one that wasn't happy with that job. Like there was reviews yeah. that I ran into that were pretty mm -hmm. clear about management mm -hmm. issues and some other stuff like that, that was going mm -hmm. on there. Was that the yeah. type of issues he was struggling with or was it working at night or what, what was, I think it was all of it. All of it. I think it was all of it. He didn't like the hours. He didn't like the job. You know, he was definitely looking to get out of that. He was definitely looking to get out of that job. Okay. Um, and he had been with Desiree only a few months, right? Like four or five yes. months. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, he called me and it was so funny because he called me and I'll, I'll never forget. I was sitting outside on my bench and he said, peeps, guess what? And I, I want to say this was around September, October, maybe. I want to say it was late September. Facebook says September. Said, yeah. 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 That's what I was thinking. It was late September, somewhere around there. And he said, I got a girlfriend. <laughs> and I said, Oh yeah. He said, yep. She's pretty cool. I really like her. And you know, and I was just so happy for him because I had been hoping, you know, I'd been hoping all this time that he'd find him a girlfriend up there to spend some time with or whatever. And, and so he was really, you know, he was really excited. And, um, I said, you know, of course I was saying, well, you got to bring her down for Thanksgiving. You got to bring her down for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because of the job situation and the finances, he said they weren't going to be able to come down for Thanksgiving or Christmas. And he did spend Christmas at her and her mom's house. I mean, they welcomed him in. They've got pictures of them all in their mm -hmm. same pajama thingies. And, and, you know, I was so, I was very grateful that she um, welcomed him in her home like she did because she made him feel like one of them. And um, he just was, he just seemed as happy as he could be. And um, like I said, when I talked to him that Tuesday night, he seemed happy about getting ready to move in with her. Um, he was, he sounded excited about it. Um, you know, that's why it totally threw me off when all this happened on Thursday. You know, I keep thinking, you know, maybe he got cold feet. Maybe he got scared and didn't know how to tell her, didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Right. You know? Okay. Okay. I thought about that. Yeah. Um, and, and this was his way of doing it again, though, if that was the case, and that was the only case, I cannot see it going on this long without him reaching out to one of us. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And he had no history of, did he ever talk to you guys about leaving in any situation? Was that ever a thing that he would do? Like, oh, I should just disappear. I should go move to another state or. Like well, he's never talked about disappearing to me. He's never talked about disappearing, but now, you know, like anybody, like I've said, like probably Jordan said, um, I wouldn't mind just going somewhere. You know, he has said that he has, you know, said, I wouldn't mind just getting my car and going somewhere, Okay. you know? And, and at the time I never thought about anything like that when he said stuff like that, because I've probably said it, I wouldn't mind getting my car and going somewhere too, yeah. you know, uh, you know, and just taking a, taking off somewhere. Did I ever take that seriously? No. Yeah. Do I look back now and think maybe I should have? Yeah. It's because hard not to. Yeah. Are. Yeah. And yeah. honestly, um, we haven't even hit all the conditions yet that are that really have me caught and thinking that he might have taken off like that. That's mm -hmm. a very strong possibility here. Mm -hmm. um, he had messaged me randomly. And of course, I've gone through every text message we've ever had. Um, and he messaged me randomly, I think, late last year, maybe or, or early last year, I think. I'm not entirely sure. But he messaged me and asked randomly would I ever move to Canada? And I was just like, well, yeah. Like, what kind of question is that? Yeah. Of course I'd move to Canada and never heard anything else on the subject. Um, but it was a very odd, random question now that I look back at it. Mm -hmm. um, 
It's interesting you say that. Them. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because if you look at the path of travel, mm -hmm. he looks exactly. like he's heading for Mexico is what it looks or Texas, yeah. you know, yeah. like, mm -hmm. and he's moving quickly. It's not like he's kind of lollygagging. He's not taking mm -hmm. his time. He's not zigzagging to different places. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it, it looks very deliberate, the path of travel that we do have in that initial 24, 36 hours. Yeah. Um, yeah. In that initial 24, 36 hours, he's headed south. Yeah. 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 Um, and we'll, we'll touch more on that, but I just want to hit a little bit more with, uh, Desiree, I'm curious, how did she determine that he was missing? Because that seemed to just happen so quick. Like all of a sudden, police know about it and things are happening. How did she come to that conclusion? <clears throat> what I was told, and Jordan, correct me if I'm wrong. Jordan, Desiree called me, I think, Friday or text me something. I don't even remember how it went, but kind of a frantic message saying Josh is missing. And I'm like, what? What do you mean Josh is missing? Apparently, he left her house that morning. Thursday morning and she sent me the last text that they sent they had to with each other and it was a normal text and he had spent the night with her Wednesday he left her house about eight o'clock Thursday got home about 8 30 that's about the last time she got a text from him okay and everything seemed normal um what she told me and Jordan correct me if I'm wrong is that she tried to message him throughout the day and wasn't getting any return messages which wasn't him necessarily odd because the place that he lived at had very spotty service mm -hmm. okay. um but i guess she had like a hunch to go over there and check yeah because um, she, kept, she kept getting no return from him so she went over there to look and when she walked in when she got there his car was gone mm -hmm. his and she got in his phone was laying on the chair chair okay and so she thought well something's up and i guess that's when she contacted the pd or the county, I don't know which one she contacted, um, but she contacted somebody, and they—that's when, in turn, they told her that about the nine one one call okay. and about getting there and him being gone. Mm -hmm. Well, that's certainly something that would only happen like in a small town. I've never heard of that happening before. That someone called police and police were like, "Oh, by the way, yeah, that guy called us earlier." Like that is right. I found that odd. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was grateful for it that yeah. they told us, you know, yeah. but. Yeah. I, I mean, even in our small town of Pryor, I don't think that would have happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. All right. So we have potential. It seems like you theorize maybe there's a potential stressor in terms of him maybe not wanting to move in with her or changing his mind or getting cold feet or something like that. We have the holidays that have just happened. He wasn't able to go out and spend time with his family. That's usually like a, a time of year when people sometimes get depressed and go through some stuff. Mm -hmm. He's got this job he's not really happy with. Is there anything else tracking for him having trouble or depression at this time? Not that I can think of. Not that okay. I can think of no. either. Okay. I mean, I mean, that about covers it. Um, and you know, and I and I don't want it to um, appear that. I, what I what I don't want it to come across as is that we think that because of his he may have gotten cold feet yeah. because of Desiree that he did this because I do not in any way no. shape or form want her to feel sure like um this is on her you know what I mean yeah it's this a possibility is, that you're having to stay open to it's not a belief of yours exactly. I, exactly. I got you I got you yeah. and I just I know she's just devastated you yeah. know Bless her heart. and she's yeah. so sweet and and you know we don't know this family okay we don't know this family we've never met this family sure. you know sure um and, but I will say they have been more than helpful through all of this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They have, they, they have, they have gone above and beyond. Uh, Jennifer has gone above and beyond. Yes. We're blessed to have um, her. We are blessed to have her, even though she's a little bit overbearing at times. She, we love her and she's, she's, she's done a lot. She's she done really a lot. Has. So Jennifer um, is Desiree's mother. And honestly, correct. we're having this conversation right now because of Jennifer. Jennifer is the one that Absolutely. reached out to me. So Absolutely. yeah. Um, just know that Desiree's family has been really helpful and supportive. Absolutely. Uh, uh, every, in this, every so. sense of the way. And, I mean, she went and cleaned up his duplex, Yeah. put his stuff in storage. I mean, they didn't have to do that. They drove across Iowa, basically, yeah. trying to see if maybe he was still mm -hmm. in the area. Wow. And, I mean, they haven't even known Josh that long. So I'm yeah. very, very grateful for yeah, them that we they are. were willing to do that for yeah. us. Most definitely. 
So we know that there's this 911 call. I'm hearing little pieces, but nothing really clear. Do have you heard it? Have you heard the 911 call? I have not. And in fact, I um um I talk I'm going to talk to the captain. He is out this week. I think he comes back Friday. I'm going to see if I can either get is there a, you know, they should have some kind of copy mm -hmm. of the 911 transaction or anything because um I would like to see it because no, we have not heard it. All we know is that there was a 911 call made that was dropped. And in a podcast prior, um, the Vanish podcast, I believe, mm -hmm. mentioned that Josh placed his 911 call and then I guess said his address. And this was the first that I was hearing. Yeah, I, I didn't know that either. I had never. No, I just assumed they told us like the call was dropped. So they just automatically did a welfare check. Um, I yeah. didn't know that Josh actually spoke on either. the phone. And if we could hear his tone of voice or something, maybe we could pick up on some stuff. But. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's something we need. Yeah, to reach that, out that's for. something that I'm going to talk to the captain about because I that's the first like Jordan. That's the first I had heard is that he told his address on that. I was I was under the understanding from the captain that the call was dropped. Yeah, right. And yeah. that that's why they went to that address. Yeah, and there's some articles that made it sound almost like it was a pocket dial or something, and they just decided to right. do a, a right. welfare and check. And that's what I was under yeah. the assumption of, you know. And yeah. it's shocking to me that I'm just now hearing that. Yeah. He, I don't know. I don't know if he actually did. So we're going to find that yeah, out. We'll I'm going to, yeah, we'll that. clarify on that one. Yeah. And you it know, might be worth, like, I'm, I'm surprised. Um, it might be worth asking Marissa over at Vanished if, if you can get a copy of whatever, because I know she pulls records. So she, oh, she's okay. I can do that. Yeah. yeah I'd reach out to that. her and just say, Hey, you know, you talked about the 911. Do you have the transcript or something? Cause she also made a comment about uh, a conclusion that the caller did not sound stressed. See, I didn't know that. Oh, see, well, that's the first we've heard of that. Yeah. 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 So she's got some, and this is this is why Marissa is amazing because she knows how to pull records. She works in the legal field and all that stuff. But oh, um, yeah. we, we definitely, we her. definitely will. I will contact. I will reach yeah. out to her after we get done here tonight. Actually, yeah. I will. Um. Okay. So, all right. So big question mark kind of in the nine one one call. And another thing that was weird in the articles I was seeing was some of them are basically phrased in a way where they're saying there's something about that 911 call that triggered the welfare check and that they were concerned for his safety. So there was right. there's some mm -hmm. aspect of that 911 call that's probably going to be important for you guys to understand, right. I think. Right. I mean, I've accidentally dialed 911 before and said, oh, you know, my bad and hung up real quick. And I've never had police you know, show up at my residence or anything like that. So I do think that there was something there yeah. that the police were like, maybe we should just go check it out, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. So obviously with cases of this nature, we have a concern about the possibility of self-harm, especially if someone is depressed. Um, mm -hmm. You have an expertise, you work in mental health, Aunt Penny? I do, I do, um, every day. And it's it's kind of been your assessment, I know, based on what you said on Vanished, that you don't think this is one of those cases. And I just wanted to hit some some markers and kind of points and ask some questions to kind of feel that out yes. a little bit. Um, do I feel do I feel like Josh was suicidal? No. OK. I don't. Yeah. Um, do I feel like um, at this point, do I feel like um, he had some kind of mental breakdown? Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, you know, working in the field and, and dealing with it on a personal basis is a whole other thing. You know, I just, I, I hate to think that, um, you know, when it first happened, I'm not going to lie. And, and, you know, Jordan probably knows this. I'm not going to lie. I seriously thought, okay, he's taken off and he's going to do self harm. Okay. That, that is my first thought. That is exactly why I drove through the creeks yeah. to where he comes home to. I'm not going to lie. That's why I went there. And, and, and I prayed on, at everyone I went to, God, please don't let me find his car here because I seriously thought he came down here and he's, he's going to do self-harm and I'm going to find him at one of these creeks that we go to. And it, you know, and I had one of my good friends go with me and, um, you know, thank God we didn't find him anywhere, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, uh, yeah. and then that. So the longer it has gone, you know, now that it's four months in, do I think that's what happened? No, not really. I don't. I do find like a sense of comfort. I mean, it sounds odd, it but weird, I do yeah. find a sense of comfort in the fact that if he had hurt himself, 
we would have found either him or his car by now. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what the, I think. With the areas that he was in and how it was being scouted by everyone, I do think we would have found him at this point had he hurt himself. So I do find a little bit of comfort in that, but also a little bit of frustration in the fact that we have no clue where this man is. Right. 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 Well, and we have we have some things we can kind of ask, like, did he go through a period of giving away items that were important to him? Like any weird things like that happen? Honestly, he is in the nicest way possible. Very stingy with, <laughs> with his items. Um, love him to death. Don't Josh, don't yell at me if you hear this podcast. Like, he was stingy with his stuff. So no, not that I know. Of. Yeah, he's not going to give nothing away that he no. Okay. Uh, not okay. going to happen. Um, did he take anything important to him from the house? It's kind of hard to pinpoint that because he was in the process of packing up all of his things to be moved to Desiree's. Um, so everything was kind of already in boxes and kind of thrown around. Um, okay. And we didn't necessarily find any like excess amount of clothing missing. Mm -hmm. um, we did find that we couldn't find a pillow of his. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay. Yes. And okay. Desiree had mentioned that he did have a tent, but she could not find the tent either. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yes. Which is kind of a comfort to me. At yeah. least he, you know, took the pillow yeah. in a tent, you know. Well, yeah. and we don't know. There's a period of time where it seems like his travel slowed down overnight, right? Mm -hmm. uh, before that next sighting the, the following morning. So it's possible he might have pulled over somewhere and just slept in the car. Like maybe that's right. why he had the pillow yeah. with him. Well, you know, there was, I was looking at the, um, going over the time frames um, from the time he left there till he came to Locust Grove till he went, it was in Mina. There's several gaps there that either he pulled off some and somewhere and rested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know because I mean that's a lot of driving in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Lot. So um, I I do believe that um, at some point somewhere uh, in those gaps of time there that he did pull off somewhere and rest. Okay. Well and. Even when he was here, sometimes um, he had a tendency to just want to sleep in his car. Um, mm -hmm. Even, you know, instead of staying at his friend's house or staying at Penny's or mine, uh, he would just rather go somewhere pretty and sleep in his car, mm -hmm. yeah. which I thought was crazy because I would want a bed. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And just to make a clarification, because I ran into conflicting information, was the car a 2013 or a 2004? 2013. Okay. I that was a 2013. No, it's a 2013. Ford okay, Taurus. yeah, because I think the the later police statement actually said it was a 2004. So okay, so yeah, somebody else asked, and we'll get into that farther when I tell you about what I've done. But um, yeah. the guy that I asked me today was it a 2004 or 2013? I said it was a 2013, and what he said, and I'll tell you that was the PI, and what he said, he said, well, you know, there's conflicting. That can be very. Um, you know, that's a big difference, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. So he said that's, that's concerning to him that some, I guess some places, some posts or something are saying that it was a 2004 when it is actually a 2013. Mm -hmm. It is actually a 2013 nice car, nice car. Yeah. Not just a post. Um, that was actually in the winter set police statement, I believe. That yes, said it, it was. was. I actually yeah. had to correct them on that post. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. And between that and small things, like when I started this episode, I stopped at missingpersons.iowa.gov and they have a profile for him, but it has no picture, doesn't have the poster. Like, you know, there's, right. there's some things that we could tighten up. I had already spoke to Aunt Penny about NamUs and told her about that. She's going to follow mm -hmm. up and see if awesome. yeah. th they're working on getting him in that database. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to talk to the captain about that. Yeah. And if I if he can't, I can do it. You said right. Yes, I'll help you. Yeah, we'll we'll get yeah. it done if uh, if Perfect. they can't. Um, Perfect. So, knowing that Josh is former military, did did he have a weapon, and is it known where it is? I and I've even spoken to his ex wife about this. Um, even when he was active duty, he did not keep a gun in the house. Yeah. Which is yeah. crazy. You'd I've never known him to have but one. But no, I mean, he's never really been like a firearm kind of guy, you know? Yeah. I, I personally have never known him to have one. Mm -mm. But, you know, I haven't lived with him for several right, years. So, right. but I, personally, I've never known him to have one. I asked Tieran in the same thing. And, you know, sometimes close friends will know 
different information than family was. Yeah, yeah. And he's saying the exact same thing. He's like, no, it was so weird. This guy never had a gun, was never into guns, didn't really talk him up or anything like that. It just yeah. wasn't his thing. So, yeah. okay. So no missing weapon. I understand he did leave his cat at home and that was kind of strange because his cat's so important to him. Is that right? Yes. Like uh, his kid. Nugs was his pride and joy. Um, and when Desiree initially went to the apartment, he she noticed that Josh had way overfed and watered her. Like he'd be gone for an extended period of time. And I think even in the chaos of all this happening, his top priority was, well, I have to make sure Nugs at least has food and water for a while in case no one comes over to my house. Okay. Um, okay. So. Just curious, where is Nuns now? Uh, with Desiree. With Desiree. With Desiree. Okay. Yes. All right. Now, Which I'm so thankful for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, now, there was something else kind of critical missing from the home, according to what I heard on the Vanish podcast, and that was a, a large sum of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't know how much. We know he had money in the attic. Okay. And that there was a chair, I guess, by the attic manhole, manhole and that the money was gone. We do not know how much money was there. I do know Josh is a real responsible kid, and I do know that he's responsible with money. Yeah. Um, do I have any idea how much money that boy could have had? None. No, I have no, no clue. Telling. Okay. Well, no. Tiernan gave me an amount. I don't. I don't know where he got it from, but oh. he, he believes it was a few thousand dollars at least. He said somewhere between three and seven. See, I, okay. I think I heard from one of Josh's friends, it was like four or five. So, I mean, you okay. know, a, a decent little sum. Yeah. A decent little chunk. Yeah. But yeah. in terms of, you know, if we're looking and trying to evaluate this self-harm possibility, he's taken a I bunch of... Yeah, like why would you take it? Why would you take a bunch yeah. of money like that? Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then even in terms of his travel, and you know, I showed the audience the pictures and the footage that we have of him. He's using his debit card everywhere. Right. Even though yeah. we know until the nineteenth, and then it stops. Yeah. After that. Yeah. Yeah. And even though we know he took cash because he stopped before he left town and he did a withdrawal and took some yes. cash. Yes, so he he's he's got a load of cash on him and he's heading south. Like if I told mm -hmm. anyone on the street that story, they would say, oh, the guy's heading for Mexico. Like it's right. Yeah. Right. Um, and I'm hoping if that's the case, because his name is in the NCIC, I don't know exactly how Border Patrol works or if you have to. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm hoping it'll get flagged. Um, yeah. But I don't know how that works. I've never had to go through a Border Patrol or anything like that. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they have plate readers. Aunt Penny, have right. you, have you right. asked the captain about that possibility, about plate readers at the not. border? Okay. I have not, but I will. Yeah, I think that's a really strong follow-up. Just with these, these conditions we're seeing, it seems like mm -hmm. it's a very strong possibility. Another thing that Tiernan actually brought up was that um, Josh's car wasn't paid off, right? No. So the fact that there has been no plate scans could mean that either he took the plates off because he didn't want to be tracked anymore. Um, or I'm thinking the possibility of, well, if he jumps to Mexico, he's not going to have to worry about the car payment anymore. He's just going to have right. the car. Right. Um, and both of those are a very real possibility at this mm -hmm. point. Yeah. And I've also, um, his car tag expired in March. Yeah. It has not been renewed. Um, you know, the captain has kept, uh, periodically checking to see if there's been any action on his car, like has it been registered to somebody else? Did he possibly sell it to somebody and get something else? Um, if that's the case, it has not registered to anybody else. Um, you know, so there again, the car issue, the car issue, that dad gum car, you know, that's I keep thinking, key. yeah, um, that car, if we could find that car, and and you know, here again, if if Josh saw the flyers and if he freaked out thinking he's in trouble or whatever being the kid he is i can't see him i mean it's a possibility but i can't see him taking a tag off another car and putting it on that one you know no. just so that he does just so that it doesn't get pinged or whatever i can't see him doing that um but you know i can't see him in his right mind not getting in touch with us either for right. four months right so you know there's so many unanswered questions that um that are just baffling to me just baffling yeah yeah 
Um, I know you mentioned before, so I want to give you some time to talk about this. You wanted to talk about some things that you've tried and that you've done in terms of the search for him. You know, we have followed. This is what I feel like. I feel like we have followed every possible lead that we've gotten that we could follow on. You know, when he was supposedly maybe seen in the Wachita Mountains, not only her and her mom went, but his friends went, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Um, Can you tell us a little more that. about that one? Because I didn't share that with the audience yet. What what was it about that one that, that drew you guys out there? Okay, so when this hiker ran into this young man that they thought was Josh, and of course this was, they didn't see the flyer till after the fact, again, um, but when they did and they reached out, they said, we think we saw him hiking on the Eagle Trail Loop. We saw a gentleman that looked like your loved one was hiking alone, wearing khaki pants, um, stating that he made an impulse decision to drive from Iowa to hike the hardest mountains in the Arkansas mountains. Hmm. Which could be crazy coincidental. Could be. But I wasn't just going to sit and, you know, right. I At got that, in the car. Was, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. had to go look. And that At was that a couple point, days. What, what yeah. day was that? Like the 30th, I think, or? 31st yes. of January. 31st, okay. Yeah. So, you know, this happened within, what, 10 days of him missing, 10, yeah. 11, 12 days of him missing. So, you know, we all jumped on that and thinking, okay, we're going to go find him. He's up there in the mountains. You know, the boys went up there, two different sets of boys, Zane and T and Caleb and Ethan went mm -hmm. up there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they looked, they searched. Jordan and Kelly went up there, you know, uh, and that's, and, got no outcome you know so again we have followed every lead that we've gotten um at the end of the day and and this is what i at the end of the day i have to know in my heart of hearts when i lay down at night that i've done everything possible absolutely you know yeah. we've we've talked to you we've talked to marissa from banished um we we've gotten we the social media it, it's blown up social media you know, I've been on TikTok. Um, it's it's we've gotten the word out. Uh, the only way I know how, and you know, social media is a big thing, and we've got a lot of people on that help find Joshua yes, Grand casting do. page, and a lot of people have reached out and shown support. So you know, I came to the decision, and I talked to Jordan before I I made the decision to hire a private investigator because I feel like, um, and I even reached out to the captain about it and asked him what he thought. And, um, you know, because I feel like maybe a private investigator can, because of the legality of it all, that mm -hmm. the, that things the captain can't do, maybe he can. And um, so I did reach out to one. I reached out to an attorney that I know, and he referred me to one in, out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And um, I called him, and I'm actually going to meet with him tomorrow. All right. Um, so um, that's when we set up the GoFundMe page. Yep to pay the private detective. Um, and, um, you know, I am, uh, again, like I said, I've got to know in my hard parts that I've done everything I know to do. Yeah, no, I can tell. And, yeah. and I know you are, yeah. I know how hard you're working on this. Yeah. And uh, also I just want to tell you how thankful I am that you've been so open with us as we've been talking about all the aspects of this case. And, um, you know, nothing has, has been off the table in terms of our conversations together. And I really, really appreciate that. Well, we appreciate, we appreciate Jennifer reaching out to you and you reaching out to us. Yes, absolutely. We're very thankful. Yeah. Uh, because I think the more the word gets out, I mean, it cannot hurt. I mean, the more the word gets out, the more people know, um, you know, the position that we're in and hands being tied. We don't know what else to do. I mean, yeah. what else do we do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know in one of those conversations we had, and I think this is just an important aspect for others out there to hear and to know about, I just wanted to, you to share a little bit about your frustrations with these potential sightings that are kind of happening. Now, we've talked about one that was a strong possibility, but you've had others as well. Can you just speak to that a little okay. bit? Yeah, I'll add to that a little bit. Um, you know, we want to we want to keep we don't want people to stop saying they possibly saw him. But at this point, because of so many possible sightings and, and, you know, I've had, and here's the deal. I had, a, I had, you know, somebody say they saw him in those mountains and, and okay. 
So then there was, I got on this Eagle Trail Loop page and I saw a guy, and I think I shared it with Jordan. I mm -hmm. think I did. I saw a guy hiking by himself, wearing khaki pants and, you know, dark headed, beard, thin. And, you know, if I had saw, if I didn't know Josh yeah, and I had seen that flyer and then saw this guy, I'm not sure I wouldn't say that was that guy. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. Josh has nothing that stands out different from the average 26 year old good looking kid. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. you know, he doesn't have spiked hair. He doesn't have, you know, he's an average good looking 26 year old kid. And so when I saw that hiker, um, I thought, you know, people could be mistaking someone that right there that looks like Josh. Right. You know, am I am I upset with those people sharing? No, absolutely not. But, you know, I'm just saying that those all these possibilities have been, you know, we can't go on a whim. We can't we at this point, we can't just like the last one that was in Montana on April 27th. OK. At Yellowstone. Um, at this point, <laughs> this is where I get frustrated at this point. OK, so we're four months into it. OK, this flyer, this has been all over social media. And I'm thinking, OK. Everybody carries a photo out around with everyone. Them. If you think you see this kid that's missing, ask him, are you the guy everybody's the family's looking for? Take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> Please yeah. take a picture and send me the picture so I can tell you, yes, that's him or no, it's yes. not. Because if I would have got a picture and that guy would have been Josh, I would have been in Montana today. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Simple as that. Uh, but I can't go to Montana on a, on a, oh, I might've seen him. Right. You know, I can't, we can't do that. And, and not that, not that I don't appreciate all the people that are saying, you know, I may have seen him because I know they mean well by it. I do. I do feel like that for the most part. <clears throat> We've had a couple of people that have been trolls that um, have just said things that weren't true at all. And, um, but I think for the most part, you know, most people are being genuine. I, yeah. I do. Yeah. And, 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 you know, shame on the ones that aren't, but for the ones that are, I don't want them to think that we don't appreciate it. I do not think, I don't want them to think that because we do. And, and genuinely we do. But I, but at this point, <clears throat> um, I've got, we've got to have confirmation. Yeah. You know, yeah. somehow Some we've got to have confirmation. Of evidence. Yeah. Either the tattoos on the legs or the a picture or <clears throat> him say, you know, somebody's asking him, Hey, are you, this kid that their family's been trying to find, mm -hmm. you know, I would ask somebody that that's just me though. I would well, granted. He may yeah. say no, to yeah. avoid, but, but I would get a picture. I would still me. Try. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I, I think you're hitting all the right points. Like I, I think there's a level of people that want to be helpful and Absolutely. in a way it's showing that they care about the case and right. they want to show you that they care. Um, Absolutely. But having the actual information that is helpful is, and you never know, yeah. like uh, when we were, t when I was talking to Aunt Penny about this earlier, I was saying you have to treat it like a lottery ticket, basically. You have to give it as much attention as scratching at it and seeing if there's that next piece right, exactly. that oh, right. I need to yeah. keep going. Um, exactly. But yeah, yeah, it is tough. In terms of the types of trolls that you're hitting, you're, you don't have people that are like saying that they know where he is. You have to give them money or anything like that, do you? We've had one scammer say that oh yeah <laughs> oh, okay. yeah at but the very beginning a scammer yeah. um and then we've had a few people who said i definitely saw him but he looked happy so i wasn't gonna ask um, oh i don't necessarily believe that um i tried to follow up on that because i was like well if he is happy that's great i still want to know he's alive yeah yeah um and then you know we've had the few we had one lady that oh don't get me started on her. <laughs> we had one lady that commented on some group that i couldn't even get into oh so i got I was, into it did you get it uh oh <laughs> okay so this lady um and, and and you know again this was a random person that screenshotted what this lady had posted on another sky troop sky took grapevine which sky took the town in oklahoma and not on our page, but on that page, Sky Took uh, Grapevine Group. Okay. And this girl that had been following on Help Find Josh Graham Caskey page saw it and she screenshotted it to me and she said, Do you know this lady? Nope. 
and she screenshotted what she said. And this lady said, okay, well, he's been found. Winterset PD has confirmed he's been found and doesn't want his family to know where he is. Yeah. Okay. So okay. We called and checked. So I immediately, because <laughs> I'm in contact, I got captain on speed dial. Okay. Yeah. I immediately talked to the captain. The captain, of course, confirmed that is not true. Yeah. That Winterset has not, you know, said anything like that and that he would like to talk to that lady. And uh, so I, in turn, got got a, accepted into that group, and oh, I yeah. I did. And I wasn't real nice when I got on the, the when I got on the post and told her, you know, shame on you and you're a troll. Mm -hmm. And the Winterset PD would like to talk to you um, because they you obviously haven't talked to them. And and you know because it just I don't got time for that. I just don't have time for that. You we don't have time for that. Right. Yeah. And yeah. um, you know, and not only the Winterset PD would like to talk to her, but the private investigator, he even has he has I haven't even actually gone to see him yet, but he has already messaged me and asked me who she was. Oh okay. and I said, you know, I don't know. But he said, Well, uh, I said the captain would like to talk to her, and he said, Well, so would I. So Maybe that's something he might be able to do. Yeah. Well, yeah. what's frustrating about that is, oh, God. you know, oh, God. God forbid someone do know where Josh is and he hears and they see posts like, oh, he's been found. He doesn't want contact with his family. They're not going to let us know. So right. that's right. what's frustrating. Well, I and, and, you know, the captain did assure me. He said, Penny, if, and, and I knew this before I talked to him, but he said, if we find Josh, if Josh is found, and Josh says, I don't want my family to know where I'm at. Mm -hmm. He said, I won't be able to tell you where he's at. Yeah. He said, yeah. but I will be able to tell you that we found him and he's okay. Yeah. And absolutely. that's all we want to know. Yeah. And we have and seen that. We've seen that happen yeah. in cases. So we know that, that that's a real thing. And you know, that's okay. If that's what it is, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At least we'll know he's okay. Yeah. I've already told the audience that I have a storm I'm dealing with here. Was that a storm warning on your phone? It was. Just... Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. It wasn't like get in the basement or anything, was it? Like you know, I didn't read it because okay. I don't get scared. <laughs> <laughs> we might want to check. Know, I'm one of the people I'm one of the people the tornado sirens went off the other night and I'm like, okay. And I looked outside and seen people running down the road and I'm like, oh well. well <laughs> Oh It'd be all right. I'm going to give you a minute to check it because I, I really wouldn't want you to get hurt tonight. We've got enough going okay, well, on with the family there. Now, but I think we're okay. Okay, okay. We're okay. Yeah, we're all right. And just a quick message for any other okay, potential. There, the <laughs> there, we there we go. There we go. There we go. Well, I'm just saying there they go. But it'll be all right. Do you have to get down into your shelter? We're almost at the yeah. end. No, we're good. You sure? Okay. Yeah. Um, I think we'll manage. Okay. Quick message to everyone out there. Don't mess with Aunt Penny if you have information. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have information that can be helpful, of course, we've got we've had a phone number on the screen through this whole thing. Uh, we'll have a link to the Facebook group down below. Um, we'll have a link to the GoFundMe down below if you want to help fund the private investigator. I am curious. I just wanted to ask. So we know that there's one potential lead in terms of this woman you want to track down that gave the bad info. Is there anything else that you kind of have focused for the private investigator? Any active lead or tip that you could share with us that you're curious about? You know, not really. Um, I, I, I had, like I said, I haven't really gone to, I go see him tomorrow okay. and, um, talk to him tomorrow. Um, but um, I'm just hoping that he can dig in, you know, whether it be find out more about the 911 call. Yeah. Um, whether it be no matter what it is, um, you know, maybe get more answers that we're not able to get. Yeah. Okay. You know, that we're not able to do on our, our end. Okay. Well, I want to let you guys go because I think you should get to your storm shelter. Um, but <laughs> thank I, you for caring. Obviously, Penny does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ab absolutely. I'm taking care of you, Jordan. Um, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So a big thank you to Tiernan and Stevens. Thank you, Penny. And thank you, Jordan. I uh, really appreciate you being here today. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go and I'll go ahead and wrap up the show on my okay, own. Okay. We really, thank really, so truly much. appreciate you. You've been awesome. And um, again, I can't thank you enough. Yes, you got very it. Great. And if there's anything that you think I can help with, you know how to get a hold of me. All right. Okay. That's great. Thank you so much. All right. You guys right, take bye care bye. and stay safe. Stay safe. Yeah, we're all right. <laughs> we'll okay. be all right. Just tornado siren. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a first for everything weather emergency that kicks into the interview. Thankfully, we had gotten through all of the questions at that point. Um, however, there was one other message that Aunt Penny and Jordan wanted to share 
specifically with Josh. And I want to make sure that if he's out there and he sees this, that he hears it. Um, please, please know. And I want everybody to know, anybody that shares this, I want everybody to share that Josh is not in any kind of trouble. Absolutely. Absolutely not in any kind of trouble. Because that that has been one thing that has concerned me, that he thinks he's in trouble. And especially the longer it goes, yeah. I think the more he'll think that. Um, so I want him to know if he's listening or anybody that shares this, please share that he's not in trouble. That we just want to know a phone call, a text, a Facebook message. I'm okay. That's all we need. And so if you're need. hearing this, Josh, we love you. And we're yeah. so ready to see you and be able to have you back home. Absolutely. And just to confirm, the police said that in their statement as well. And even if there is, you know, some of the stuff we talked about today, like the potential for not needing to make the car payments, if you take the car, uh, none of that stuff would matter. All of that stuff could be handled and taken care of. There is no criminal aspect to what has gone on at this point. And I just, I can't help but shake this possibility. When I look at this map within that first 36 hours of travel, he was halfway to the border. If that's where, where he was heading. Um, it could be that he came to the conclusion about, Oh, I need to stop using my cards. And from here on out, I'm on cash and that's that. And then we wouldn't have those traces anymore. Uh, it could be even in terms of, you know, aunt Penny didn't think he'd be the type of person to steal tags or a plate from another car. Maybe he would just take like a dealership, you know, the, the kind of, uh, inserts that they use for plates to make it look like it was a recent purchase to make the rest of that travel without getting scanned on a plate scanner. There's, there's other things that could be going on here. And just with the amount of monetary resources alone that he took, with the direction that we're seeing here and how quickly he's making that travel, I can't shake that possibility that he's out here somewhere. Um, what do you think? Let's talk about that in the chat down below. And as always, I ask that we please remain respectful to the families. Um, we can talk about any theories there, but it's really just about the phrasing. And of course, you guys are a searchlight audience, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, like I did say, I'll have a link down below to the Help Find Joshua Graham Kasky Facebook group. Please join it. Show your support there. They're also great about any key information that comes out. That's where I got all the photos, the video footage. They're posting all of it there. Um, so be sure to stop by here. And of course, on behalf of myself and my supporters, as soon as I'm done filming here, I'm going to make a donation to this GoFundMe to help cover that fee for the private investigator as well. Um, be part of the group that's helping this family try to find where Joshua is. So a big thank you. Uh, once again, just a quick reminder, check out The Vanished. It's always a great episode over at The Vanished. Please check it out and follow up on more. Learn more about this case with Marissa over there. A big thank you to the wonderful supporters. You might have noticed we don't run a bunch of ads in these presentations. We can only do that because of our amazing supporters. A big thank you to PayPal supporters Larissa Merchshank and Jennifer Wilson. If you'd like to become one of those supporters that helps us help these families, please check out lordandarts.com. There you can sign up for Patreon, sign up for PayPal, buy merchandise, or even just buy us a coffee like Robert Martin likes to do about every week. Actually, Robert Martin does. Thank you, Robert. Uh, we really appreciate all our supporters that keep us here, keep us helping these families and give us this opportunity to do so. Big thank you to you guys. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Hopefully you're not dealing with the storm where you are, but if you are, stay safe. And I'll see you again here next week on the Lord and Arts channel. <laughs>